Well, thanks for having me here today. I'm going to talk about math and sports. I guess it's called mathletics. Let me let me just see if I can, if what we can see here. Okay. So we don't have much time, so I figured I'd talk about math and the Super Bowl, and then math and basketball. <laughs> so let's talk about betting on the Super Bowl. So for those of you who don't know how it works, let me give you a primer. The Colts were favored by around five and a half points. That means if the Colts, of course they didn't win and we're sorry about that here in Indiana, but the rest of the country is probably happy. Okay, if the Colts win by more than five and a half, that would mean if you bet on the Colts, you win. If the Colts win by less than five and a half, then if you bet on the Saints, you win. So how do they come up with the five and a half? They want half the money to be bet on each side. So if half the money is bet on each side, how do they make money? They make money because you have to bet $11 to win 10. So if you bet on the Colts and they lose, you lose $11. If you bet on the Colts and they win, you win $10. Okay, now here's something interesting. The betting on the point spread, the bookies don't care who wins. But there's another way to bet, the money line. Suppose you thought the Colts would win the game. If you thought the Colts would win the game, you have to bet $205 to win $100. If you thought the Saints would win the game, you have to bet $100 to win $170. So in other words, you have to bet a lot of money to win $100 on the Colts. You don't have to bet that much money uh, to win you bet $100, you win $170 if you bet on the Saints. Now here's the interesting thing. If the Colts win the game, then the bookies make no money on those bets. Because if the Colts win the game, then everybody, all the Saints people will bet $100 simply are used to pay the Colts people. So the bookies want the underdog to win because if the Colts win, they make no money. <coughs> but. If the Saints win the game, everybody who bet on the Colts pays the bookies 205. They only pay the bookies 170. So the bookies make $35 on every pair of people. So that's for, so the bookies are usually rooting for the underdog in games. Okay, let's talk about the game itself. Everybody thinks the Saints coach Sean Payton did a great job of coaching. And I certainly agree with that. So what were the three decisions he made, and were they the right decisions? Yes, they were. Even if they had worked out wrong, I think they were correct. He did the onside kick. Pretty amazing. He also went for it at the end of the first half, and he went for a two-point conversion. <laughs> OK, so let's try and explain the onside kick. You may have seen in the Wall Street Journal, if onside kicks are tried before the fourth quarter, teams recover 60% of them. That's quite amazing. I didn't know that, but Sean Payton obviously did. So how would you figure out if the onside kick was a good decision? Well, you look at what you can do in football is translate every situation into points. If the Saints recover the onside kick, that would make them 1.33 points better off than they were. If the Colts recover it, it would make them 2.47 points worse. And if they kick deep, they would be 2.7 points worse than they were when they kicked off. So with a 60% recovery rate, you can show the expected points are higher on the onside kick than the non-onside kick. How about going for it at the end of the first half? Well, if the Saints make it, they get seven points, and maybe half the time the Colts get a field goal. So they get five and a half points. 
on average. If they go for it and they fail, then maybe 10% of the time the Saints get a field goal, which is what happened. That's worth 0.3 points. Now a field goal would give the Saints three points, but the Colts would have a 50% chance probably of scoring on their drive. And if you work out the math, you can see if the Colts have more than a 23, sorry, if the Saints have more than a 23% chance of making the first down, then they should go for it. And it's quite clear they had at least a 50% chance. So that was a good call. What about going for two-point conversion? They were up by five points. Well, if you're up by five and you get a two-point conversion, you're up by seven. That's a lot better than being up by six because if you're up by six, the touchdown beats you. So that was a good call. One more point on the Super Bowl and we'll go to basketball. Tracy Porter, unfortunately for the Colts, cost them the game by intercepting that pass. He's an IU grad, so I guess we should be happy for him. How many points was that play worth? Well, when the Colts had the ball, that position was worth 2.6 points. The interception <coughs> was worth 6.7 points. And if you add that up, that interception was a nine point play. Okay, let's talk about basketball. There are two, who do we think is the best basketball player in the NBA? How many people think Kobe Bryant is the best player? How many LeBron James? Okay, how many Dwayne Wade's? No, but more people think LeBron James and I, but the, the reporters always tell us Kobe Bryant's the best player. How can we analyze who's the best player? Well, there's two ways to look at basketball players. <coughs> One is to look at box score metrics, like points scored, rebounds, assists, etc. cetera. 